Thanks to Simply Safe for sponsoring this video. Right now, they're having their best sale of the year. More info on that later. So this is video number three of my autonomous solar-powered rover project. The first iteration used little brushless gear motors that were clearly not robust enough. The second iteration was an experiment with 3D printed cycloidal gearboxes that worked fairly well, but they were built around brushed Barbie Jeep motors which were pretty inefficient. For the latest version, my goal was to improve efficiency and maneuverability. For this, I decided to go with 5010 brushless motors and BL Heli ESCs set up for bidirectional control. The control fidelity with this combo is just about as good as you can get with hobby parts. I also wanted to design a new 3D printed gearbox because while it might not be the most practical option, it's definitely a fun challenge, and it's really cool to see how 3D printed drivetrain components hold up after months of use. When designing these parts, I was definitely prioritizing speed over quality. I wouldn't say it's a design I'm super proud of, but it seemed to work out really well in the end with a few tweaks. The final gear ratio I ended up with was 359 to 1. This gearbox can actually accommodate an 866 to 1 ratio, but that ended up being too slow, so I decreased it by increasing the size of the gear on the motor. All the gears use this herringbone V-shaped tooth design, which helps keep them aligned. And it's supposed to reduce noise, but this thing is incredibly noisy, so I'm not sure if that's actually true. Everything was printed on my CR10 with a 0.8mm nozzle and Sunlu PLA+. The design uses a ring gear on the inside of the wheel hub for the final reduction stage. The benefit to this is that you don't have to transfer power through a shaft. There's more leverage if you turn the wheel from the outside. This eliminates components that experience high torsional stress, which can be really significant when this thing is skid steering. The downside to this design is that the final stage is difficult to enclose, so it's susceptible to getting jammed by debris. This would be a much bigger problem if the rover was driving on rocks and dirt, but it's only going to be used in grass, so I decided to give it a shot. Thankfully, I was able to reuse the wheels from my cycloidal version, so I didn't have to print new ones. It's definitely overtuned with these new motor drives. They respond so much faster than the old brushed motor drives that uh, I need to turn the steering gains down a lot. At first, the tuning was really bad, and it took me a long time to get it driving half decently. This thing might even be noisier than the 3D printed tank. I'm now seeing what is probably the biggest design flaw with this new gear drive design, and that's that the gears, um, both this external one and the, uh, the internal gears are already getting caked in grass. That's probably gonna cause it to self-destruct after a while. So it's about three hours later and it's still moving. I am definitely starting to be able to see the outline of the waypoint mission in the in the grass. Let's see how the gears look in there. Oh wow, they are very just caked in organic matter. That doesn't look too great. Got some slugs on the wheels. Yeah, look at that. That's not great looking. I don't know why I assumed <laughs> this would work. Yeah, it's just mashing all the grass in there into like a pulp. Despite being caked with grass, there's hardly any rolling resistance in the gears, which is really surprising. So uh, this seems like a big problem, but it doesn't really seem like it's panning out to be a big problem. This stuff is spinning really easily. It's a new day. Last night I tuned the steering control loop a bit more, so I'm just gonna let it go all day again. I'm very impressed with how the RD Rover code handles being in hold mode. Um, whenever it doesn't have enough voltage from the sun, my Arduino that's in there puts the autopilot in hold mode, basically just meaning it does nothing, it stops driving. And uh, even after being in hold mode all night long, right as the voltage raises in the morning, it just starts driving again, right where it left off. It doesn't even lose the current waypoint that it's at, just keeps going. So it's probably been out here with these new gearboxes for about a week at this point. I changed some of the compass offset settings and now it's driving much straighter. It's kind of partly cloudy today and it seems to be getting enough energy from the sun for about a 50% duty cycle um, of on time versus off time charging. So not bad. It seems as though these uh, gearboxes pull about one amp less than the cycloidal versions, but it drives faster. So it's both faster and more efficient. So definitely an improvement. 
They're still caked full of grass, but that doesn't seem to affect it at all. So I installed some little LED current displays. Um, one in between the battery and the ESCs, and another in between the solar cells and the battery. So we can actually see how much power the solar panels are giving uh, the battery. Solar panels are giving 1.5 amps on a cloudy day and the motor is drawing what looks like to be an average of probably two amps. So on a cloudy day at noon, we're just shy of being able to get all the power we need to run continuously from the sun. For whatever reason, it seems that slugs are attracted to the wheels, which is really unfortunate because they just turn into lubrication when the rover starts driving. At this point, the rover was still tuned very poorly and I thought it might be because of the GPS offset or compass interference. So here, I was experimenting with different positions. None of that worked. So I'm kind of bummed because they started mowing part of the field. Um, and I think they're going to mow all this part too. And I was really looking forward to after a few months of the rover driving around, it'll just have like a big indentation figure eight packed down in the grass. And everywhere else will be super tall, but hopefully it grows back after they cut it. You can't really see the figure eight from here right now, but it's definitely much more packed down where the rover's been driving um, than everywhere else. It sounds much better these days, probably because there's so much grass and slugs in the gears. I really can't believe that this drivetrain has lasted as long as it has. It's also still having some navigation issues, obviously. It sounds like there's finally been a failure. What's happening? Oh, it just dug itself a hole. But that wheel isn't spinning and it should be. So let's see if I lift it out of its hole. Why? Why isn't this wheel spinning? It's just bound up. It's seized. Wow, that one's been scooping some dirt. That's a nice big hole. That motor's just seized up. It's hot, so there's current going through it. Okay, well, I'll take it home and see what happened. This thing smells like livestock. I guess that's just because it's got so much smashed grass all over it. Okay, I'm about to take this cover off for the first time. Whoa. It definitely has like the same type of residue that's on the inside of lawn mowers. Oh, it's crusty. I wonder how many slugs are mushed into this mixture. So this is the gear that's bound up and I want to know why. Wow. Oh, that does not look healthy. These teeth are just, I mean, this is kind of what I expected, but I just, I guess I expected the grass to smush down more, but these gears are just kind of rolling on each other, not really meshing together. No, they're, they're meshing together, just not as much as they should. I'm actually surprised the teeth aren't gunked up even more than they are. It still looks like it, it's operatable, which makes sense because it was operating earlier today. The size of these teeth is pretty coarse. Uh, they can, you know, chew through quite a bit. Wow. And then inside here, it's just caked. Oh, that's disgusting. There's probably so many slug guts in that. Look at this. Oh, yeah. Oh, gross. This is like compost. Wow. Whoa, wow, there's mycelium growing on it. I'm growing mushrooms in my rover. That's awesome. <laughs> it's just dirt. It's, this grass is just composted into dirt. There's so much chunks. The gears definitely don't look straight. That could very well be why they bound up. This is, I think I just made cow poop. It's, it, this stuff literally just smells like cow poop. It's the exact same compound. Like it's just chewed up grass. Like literally that's all it is. Okay, I think I just hit some slug guts because this stuff on my fingers smells really, really bad. It smells like really poopy. So I figured out why it seized up. This yellow gear right here welded itself or fused itself to the red surface behind it. Um, and you can see here on the back side of the gearbox, you can just see the gear through that layer of PLA. So it just got hot. I think it just filled up with grass and then they started rubbing and fused. And also that uh, gear in there, that smaller diameter gear looks pretty torn up. I think what I'll do is I'll reprint all these gears 
and then clean everything up, put it all back together, and then just design better covers that really kind of enclose the gearbox more so that this doesn't happen again. Just gonna let all this stuff soak and hopefully a lot of the organic matter will kind of dissolve. So I just opened up the second gearbox and it's not nearly as bad for some reason. The gear teeth aren't as packed with grass. There was a full blown stick wedged in this one right through that gear. Crazy that these things still worked. I also started having problems with the center parts of the gear hubs breaking. At first I tried gluing them back together and reinforcing the area with Starbond CA, but ultimately I ended up redesigning this part to be more beefy. I printed some new gears that were looking pretty fresh and installed them in all four gearboxes. I also made some adjustments to the housings so that they were now fully enclosed, except of course for the big ring gear and the wheel hub. So this is the first drive with the new fully enclosed gearboxes. Well, I guess they're only partially enclosed because the uh, gear that's on the underside of the rim is still out in the open, but that one didn't seem to be as much of a problem last time. It is a lot noisier with these new gears. The old gears that were packed full of grass definitely suppressed sound a lot more. I can't even hear myself talk right now. Uh-oh, we got a wheel that's fallen off. It looks like it's the same problem that I noticed before. Um, that wheel hub part broke. It's still driving fine though. That's impressive. Just three wheel, three wheel drive. I wonder how long it's been going like this. It can't be more than a few hours because I was out here yesterday. So I just put a new gear hub on there and now the rover's heading back out to the waypoint mission. So it's a completely sunny day and the rover is driving non-stop. So it's definitely getting 100% of the energy it needs from the sun. I did notice a problem earlier where one of the gearbox axles was coming out. I think it was this one here, so I put some tape over it. Um, hopefully it won't come out anymore, although it looks like it kind of is protruding. So I need to push that back into place. I'll have to come out here with some glue or something and really uh, lock it in there. But yeah, other than that, all is well. There's almost always a rise in break-ins during the holidays, and that's why Simply Safe is having their best sale of the year right now. My roommates and I live in a slightly sketchy area, and Banji decided we needed better home security, so he built a facial recognition Nerf ball launcher that autonomously shoots any burglars. Intruder, 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 intruder. Freeze, put your hands where I can see them. Wait, stop, come back. Suspect is uncooperative. Target acquired. Engaging target. Turns out he's a better software engineer than mechanical engineer, so we decided to get Simply Safe instead. Simply Safe brings home security into the digital age with a network of wireless sensors around your home that are all connected to the cloud. This enables you to monitor your home from anywhere you have an internet connection. Simply Safe also offers a professional monitoring service and will alert the police if anything bad happens. There are a wide range of sensors, including entry, motion, glass break, flood, carbon monoxide, smoke, video doorbell, HD camera, smart lock, key fob, control panel, and freeze. You also get the ever so aesthetic base station. Now all this tech sounds pretty hard to install, huh? Turns out it's actually as simple as connecting the base station to your Wi-Fi and following the simple step-by-step -step instructions to connect each one of the sensors. They even use adhesive pads to connect to the walls, so installation is quick and easy. Visit simplysafe.com slash rctestflight to take advantage of their amazing holiday offer. It's the best deal of the season, so don't miss out. Now back to the rover video. So I don't know what happened, but I just found the rover way over here by the edge of the field, and it looks like the GPS mast got broken off somehow, um, which is really strange. I don't know what could have done that. There's also no GPS on the end of it. So that's super strange. Like there's no poles or anything around here that would have hit that mast. Maybe it was like a deer or something, a coyote, I don't know. Very odd. There's no indication that it like ran into the, the kind of dirt wall on the edge of the field or anything like that. So what a mystery. So it's the next day. I just replaced the GPS mast. And I'll let it run again overnight.
It really seems like these giant banana slugs are attracted to the gears for some reason. There's a bunch of them all in the gears. They willingly, oh, that one just fell. They willingly crawl? I don't, what do you call it? What, what does a slug do? How does it move? It doesn't crawl. They willingly slide up into the gears. It's so weird. I designed a new gear hub with a beefier center section that seemed to prevent them from breaking. I replaced them one by one as they would break. There's a random wheel sitting here, another broken gear hub. Three wheels are spinning, one wheel's not. This thing just broke off and it made it quite a ways before getting stuck. All right, I replaced the broken gear hub and now we'll just let it keep going until the next one breaks. Well, that doesn't sound right. I'm not exactly sure what's going on here, but it just randomly started making that noise. August 27th, still going. We made it to September, yeehaw. September 4th. It's now September 10th. I just switched out the old Frankenstein three cell 32 amp hour LiPo with an LIFE PO4 battery from Relyon. They make awesome LIFE PO4 batteries for all sorts of applications. And these are nice because they're safer than LiPos. They're not as likely to blow up and they all have built-in BMSs with overcharge and over discharge protection and cell balancing. So this Relyon battery will be a much better fit for the Rover um, since it's just living out here in the field and it needs to be reliable and safe to not start a brush fire. <laughs> I'm actually surprised at how well the LiPo was working before this. There was no cell balancing going on at all. This charger is just a straight input DC charge controller and the cells pretty much never went out of balance. So I guess that's purely just luck or just coincidence that the cells are really well matched in their internal resistance. But anyways, this rely on LIFE PO4 battery will be a much better option for the Rover. So this is what I'm using from now on. It's now September 28th and in the battle between the grass and the Rover, the grass is winning. It's gotten a lot longer now. Um, we've had a lot of rain recently, so there's been a lot more moisture and the vegetation is kind of growing back before it really dies out for the winter. And the rover hasn't been driving as much because the sun is pretty low in the sky now and the days are a lot shorter. Um, it gets dark pretty early and it gets light a bit later, so. It's the next day, September 29th, and the rover is actually driving when I got here. It's about 11 a.m., but it's only gonna get worse as the year progresses and the days get shorter. So we need more power, and I have a plan. I'll give you a hint. It involves ailerons. Boom, wings. The solar plane V3 has since been retired, and I still have its wings, so I figured instead of just sitting in my closet, I ought to put them to use. And I built a janky little trailer to go on the back of the rover and pull them around. I'm definitely not proud of the quality of this trailer, but I am proud of the fact that I built it in under an hour. It's just pieced together with a bunch of crap I had laying around, some old Freefly Movi parts that I pulled out of the dumpster, some foam wheels, no bearings, just 3D printed bushings. Pretty amazing. Hillbilly engineering at its finest. Although a little more classy because of the carbon fiber. I can tell there's definitely a huge surplus of energy now because at one point I unplugged the battery and it just kept driving. So the solar cells are producing probably over 100%, maybe even 200% of the power that it needs to drive. So that's great. We should be able to charge the battery and drive through a lot of the night now. I'll have to come back late at night and see if it's still going, or early in the morning and even see if it's still going. That would be awesome. But anyways, this trailer is great. Yesterday afternoon I had this idea, and then this morning I implemented it. So that was a quick turn prototype right there. As far as the electrical connection, I just put these wings in parallel with the two panels that are on the top of the rover. There's probably a voltage difference between the two panels, so I just put diodes in between each one. Um, I don't think it really matters that much. I don't. We're not going for absolute peak efficiency here, so whatever. I've got the Genesun GV charge controller in the rover, so it should be able to handle up to 10 amps of charge current. I don't think we're quite there, but a lot more amps than before, that's for sure. Now the real question is, will it survive the elements? Probably not. Stay tuned to find out. <laughs> oh, it just cracks me up that my rover has ailerons. That's so good. Oh no! It's the next day, and uh, the rover did a wheelie. That's no good. Huh, it just got off course a bit. Weird. 
So I freed the rover and zip tied the GPS mast back on. It had broken off and now we're back in business. I heard there's actually a solar storm going on recently, so that could have caused a greater than normal GPS position error and led to it getting stuck in the bush over there. Not sure. It's the next day, October 1st, 10 a.m., and uh, the rover's not moving and the ESCs are beeping, which means it hasn't moved for at least the last 10 minutes or 20 minutes or so. This goes to show that uh, the wing solar panels aren't some magical infinite power source. It's a kind of a foggy overcast morning um, and obviously they're not getting enough power to drive right now, which is not entirely surprising, but I am still hoping though that these will uh, give enough power for it to drive on a cloudy day because 90% of days here in the winter are cloudy. So I'm not entirely sure, but there's a good chance that even though it's cloudy today, it'll still get enough power to charge back up and eventually start driving. Let's see, what do we have here? Ooh, uh-oh. Looks like we got some condensation on the inside of the um, plastic. That's no good. That little red light right there, once the battery charges up to its, um, above its low voltage threshold, that'll turn green and then it'll start driving. That guy better move before it starts up. Ah, busted. It's later the same day, the sun's out now, and I've caught the rover coming into these bushes again. It's also making a really strange noise now. It definitely sounds like something is rubbing in one of the gearboxes. Look at this, it's drifting over into the weeds again. The track's over here. It's going way over there, what the hell? Today has not given me a whole lot of confidence in this thing to keep going. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if there was a gearbox failure here pretty soon because of that noise. That no that rattling noise actually just kind of went away. Oh, now it's back. Oh yeah, it's back. But it looks like all the condensation from inside the solar panels is gone, so that's good. It's now October 5th, still going strong. October 7th, it's a cloudy day. We're probably only driving for about 50% of the time today. I was hoping the wings would give it enough power to drive continuously on a cloudy day, but doesn't seem to be the case. Definitely better than before though. It's October 8th, high noon, and the rover's driving 100% of the time. It's not that much uh, less cloudy than it was yesterday. Maybe there was some sun this morning and the battery charged up a bit, I'm not sure. Wow, looks like we just got too far off course and now it's stuck in the tall grass. High centered, damn. I just gave it a winch and now we're free. It's October 12th. There's a lot of condensation in the solar panels because it was raining all weekend. But now the sun's out and the rover's running nonstop. These gearboxes seem to have self-healing powers. Seem to be working perfectly fine now. No weird sounds or anything. It's October 13th and it's super windy today. I'm glad the wings haven't blown over. They're kind of lifting up and moving around though. Oh, it looks like one of the ailerons is blown in. Oh no, the wind blew the wings off. This is crazy, it actually broke the trailer. This whole tube clamp just swiveled. I got it tied back together with some string and tape. Hopefully that doesn't happen again. There's no trailer, where'd it go? Damn it, fixed it. We're back up and running. It's October 15th all as well. Uh-oh, looks like it's stuck again. Oh yeah, it definitely dug itself a hole there. Might have got caught on this blackberry vine. It was totally this vine. It grabbed the rover right there by the gearbox in between the frame and the gearbox. After I got it unstuck yesterday, it hadn't moved as of this morning, but I just put a fresh battery in it and now it's up and running again. The gearboxes are now making some weird noises after being stuck for a while. Probably because they kicked up a bunch of dirt and uh, little pebbles that are now kind of lodged in there. It's October 21st, all seems well. It's October 26th. First time I've been out here in a while, and I got here and the rover was running. That's awesome. It's October 27th, we got a little bit of sun, and we are cruising. The trailer makes the funniest squeaky noises. I swear, the entire waypoint mission has shifted to the south by like 10 feet. 
it totally used to go right here and now it's going way out there. That's weird. Yeah, it's you can totally tell. And this is I've been noticing this for the last month or so. It's not new. Like the rover's right there. You can tell it's been going there because the grass is all packed down. But then over here where it used to go, the grass is growing again. That's really weird. It's like there's some GPS position drift over time. Although I don't think that happens. It's October 28th and it looks like we finally had a catastrophic failure. This gear motor seems to be broken. The wheel's not getting any torque. Upon further inspection, it looks like this motor's just not spinning. Um, the gear, the drivetrain, the gearing is all still working. It's actually back driving the motor right now, which is pretty amazing that it can do that with such a low gear reduction. But uh, that means there's an electrical connection with this motor. So I need to figure out what's wrong. It's Friday, November 6th. The rover's been in my garage all week. I was uh, waiting for a new ESC to come in the mail and I finally replaced it and we're back up and running. I just put a fresh battery in there so we should be running all day. November 11th, cruising right along. November 12th, still rolling. It's November 16th. It's really rainy and dreary today, so I charged the battery. It's November 17th and it's really windy today. The trailer flipped over once, so I just put a weight on the bottom of it. Not good, trailer's falling apart. Okay, I cut the trailer loose, so I'll come back later and attach it. It's November 18th and we're still cruising with no trailer. I put a fresh battery in it today. There's a broken wire on the trailer from when it flipped over in the wind, so I need to replace that. Oh no, the rover sank. It sank in the grass, wow, oh yeah. Looks like it might have gotten caught on a blackberry vine and then it dug itself a hole. Also, the test field is getting really wet and soggy this time of year, so it's kind of like a, a marsh out here. So I just put a fresh battery in it and pulled it out of the hole. It should start driving again in a sec. There it goes, perfect timing. But this uh, kind of highlights a problem that I mentioned before, which is the waypoint mission is slowly over time drifting south. Um, it got stuck in that vine that's kind of outside of the south boundary of where the waypoint mission has been. Um, and it's continually drifting further and further, so really strange. It's November 20th. I just put a fresh battery in it. November 23rd, I just charged the battery. It's November 25th, and it's so pretty. It's December 1st, it was sunny all day. It's not driving now, but the ESCs are not beeping, which means that it was driving a little while ago. So I've had my big 32 amp hour LiPo in it for the last few days. And when I got here this morning, it was at like six volts. So it had been over discharged last night, probably because it was freezing cold. So I'm gonna try and revive that LiPo, but right now I've got a new battery in it. So it should run all day today. It was pretty sunny two days ago. It wasn't sunny yesterday, it's not sunny today but the grass looks pretty packed down, so it must have been driving two days ago when it was sunny. Anyways, it's moving right now. How neat is this? I think this uses Bing map data, and you can see the imagery data, so that means it's probably no more than four or five months old or so. Today, everything is just wet. I don't think it's driven at all today until now. I just swapped out the battery. Um, so it should drive for the rest of the day. As long as the ground doesn't turn into a swamp and swallow it. It's December 11th and I charged the battery. I noticed that one of the gearboxes is stripped out. It's currently three wheel drive, but that doesn't seem to matter at all. It's still driving just fine. That wheel is still getting a little bit of torque, but it can still slip. The rest of the wheels are all still going strong. This thing has survived far longer than I initially expected it to. With it being winter time, the solar rover is not really a solar rover. It's just a rover. And I'd rather not spend my life just swapping out batteries all the time. So I think I'm going to take this home today and open up the gearboxes and see how they look. So I connected the flight controller to Mission Planner one last time to see if there might be any clues as to why the rover's path was shifting south ever so slowly. It looked like over time, the compass calibration had got worse. Or maybe its physical position was changed a bit. I'm not sure. 
but you could definitely see that there was a difference between the rover's actual heading and the heading that was shown on Mission Planner. I think this is probably the reason why the rover's path was shifting to the south. It wasn't actually a GPS issue, just a compass heading issue. I am pretty bummed that I'm kind of calling it quits even though the rover's still driving just fine, but this can't go on forever, so. I feel like I just euthanized my dog. So now we'll see how the rover held up to all those months in the field. One of the cool things that I noticed was that the tire treads went from being layered plastic with little layered grooves in it to just smooth plastic. It just got worn down and smoothed out over time. And the tops of the treads in some places almost look like an injection molded part. The frame got pretty rusty. That's no surprise because I didn't coat it with anything. It's just raw steel. There's tons of grass seed and just all sorts of field debris all over the rover. Some of the steel bolts got pretty rusty. The motors are covered in gunk. A lot of the silicone wires got sun bleached. None of my bearings got too messed up, but a lot of them seemed to get pretty rusty. There was mouse poop on the frame, so mice must have been crawling all over it at some point. The rover was kind of like its own little ecosystem. Some of the grass seeds that got lodged in the frame even started to grow. There's some sort of worm slug kind of creature shoved in the dirt there on the tire. One of the ESCs showed some corrosion. I'm not sure if that's under the epoxy that I put on to waterproof it or if it's over the epoxy, but I'm surprised it still worked. The pivot point in the articulating frame still works fine. A little rusty, but that's all right. Now let's take a look at the drivetrain. So this is the outer ring hub gear from the wheel that stopped working. It really looks fine. It seems like it has a lot of life left in it. The drive gear for that stage looks a little bit more worn down. But that's expected because each tooth sees more action because there's fewer of them. On the inside, there's quite a bit of gunk. So that goes to show that even though I kind of sealed off these gearboxes, they weren't really sealed. There, there was enough holes for stuff to still get in there. Probably mostly just like grass and seeds and stuff like that. They got ground up and kind of turned into powder. But a lot of the gears in there look fine. On this particular gear that failed, it's clear that it was just the smaller diameter gear portion of the, the orange gear here. There's this weird kind of squishy powder residue that was uh, left on the walls of the gearbox. It's really strange. I don't know what that is. It must just be like soggy powder. <laughs> soggy ground up grass powder. I don't know. But the rest of the gears in that same gearbox really look fine. They look like they have quite a bit of life left in them. So I'm not sure why that one failed. It probably just got caked full of too much stuff and then wore down. Here's another ring gear. It also looks pretty fine, which is really surprising because these are the gears that were exposed. So they were just constantly getting debris in them and then they would just chew it up and spit it out, I guess. Inside of this gearbox, everything looked pretty fine. All the teeth were very intact. Looked like it definitely could have kept on running. There's some debris in there, but it didn't seem to have a huge effect on it. Even the motor gear didn't even look that worn down, even though it was experiencing the most RPM. Here's the third ring gear. It also looks fine, but those ones are also experiencing the least RPM. The drive gear for that looks a little more worn down for sure. You can kind of tell that the teeth have gotten sharper over time. And there were indications that the wheel was rubbing on the gearbox cover, as you can see right here. On the inside, there was clearly a lot of grass. Now on this fourth gearbox, the ring gear actually split down the middle, but it was still working when I stopped the rover, so maybe the herringbone gear design was kind of holding the halves together. Now this drive gear looks pretty bad, um, but it was still working. At some point, it must have gotten some rocks or just harder debris stuck in there because the teeth are pretty chewed up and worn down in places. And then inside that gearbox, this gear right here, like you can tell that the teeth are much sharper, like it wore down a lot. So that's interesting. It was still working though. And then this one was also still transferring torque, but <laughs> a lot of the teeth are like more than half gone. So that would not have lasted very much longer, I don't think. But the motor gear in that gearbox looks fine. The teeth were definitely smoothed down a lot, like the layers got erased. It looked more like injection molded parts. The motors look pretty gunked up, but that doesn't matter at all. They still work fine. There's just a lot of powder in there from the gears smashing stuff up and spitting it out. It even kind of looks like there was a little bug that lived in the stator at one point. It left a little web cocoon kind of thing. Wouldn't that be an interesting place to live? 
There's something really satisfying about pushing these 3D printed drivetrain components to their breaking point. I find it really interesting to see how they wear down over time and what parts fail first. It's really great feedback for my next project that might use 3D printed gears or motion components, whatever that might be. There will be a link in the description to the STL files for the gearbox, but I'm not really sure that I'd recommend building it because it's really prototype-esque and I didn't really put a ton of time into polishing the design. So here's a little diagram of the rover's electrical system for those of you interested. Basically you have the solar panels connected to an MPPT controller that charges a battery just like you would expect. And then the battery is wired into the ESCs that go to the motors. So we have an Arduino Nano here that is used to measure the battery voltage and based on that measurement to determine whether the uh, flight controller should be in hold mode or auto mode. So when the battery is low, the Arduino tells the flight controller to be in hold mode. So the rover will not drive and the battery will not get discharged anymore. And then once the battery charges up and surpasses a certain voltage, the Arduino will say, okay, flight controller, you can go into auto mode now. And then it'll go into auto mode and the rover will start driving. Now you could write code for the Arduino that spits out an S bus signal and that would bypass this S2 PW mixer and go directly into the flight controller. But I didn't want to have to deal with that and I'm not very good at writing code. So I used this S2 PW mixer thing that basically takes just normal servo outputs from the Arduino using a servo.h library and converts those channels. I think it was just one channel in this case, just the gear channel, so channel five converts that into an S bus signal, and then the S bus signal then goes into the flight controller. So that's all there is to it, pretty simple. Just an Arduino pretending to be an RC receiver, telling the flight controller when to go into hold mode or auto mode, depending on the battery voltage. So that's all for this video, thanks for watching, bye.